guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. Today, as I promised you guys in my last video, we will add the Stripe Skunk to the Elm Hill City Zoo. The Stripe Skunk is of course a new animal added to Planet Zoo with the new Twilight Pack. So today we are continuing the work on this little complex of two habitats. The first one is already done, it was the raccoon habitat that I uploaded last time and I promise you guys that in the second part of this little concept there will be a striped skunk habitat. So today's enclosure is sort of like a mirror reflection of the last one, uh, but of course with totally different uh, insides, I mean different nature, different idea for the inside of the enclosure, but the barriers are basically the same, that's why I copied them over from the raccoon habitat. If you guys would like to see how I created those things and you haven't seen the raccoon habitat, I will link the video down in the description and also on the screen uh, so you can go and check it out. This concept is based on something that I found on the Pinterest. Uh, this was the habitat for the raccoons and some other animal. I'm not sure what which one, uh, but it was in Denmark in uh, some kind of park called the Aqua Freshwater Aquarium, which I think also houses some mammals. So this is where I took it from. And I am very glad that you guys like the raccoon habitat because while building for the raccoons, I thought to myself, okay, what if they won't like it? I have it planned also for the skunk so they wouldn't like two episodes in a row but yeah you guys loved it so I was so so happy to see that and yeah today we are doing something very similar but also very different uh, there won't be any uh, like uh, climbing structures of course uh, it will be more like nature focused I was trying to find something nice inspiration for the skunks, I mean, I was looking for different habitats in different zoos. I must say that most of the skunk habitats are either really tiny or they are very plain and boring. Uh, so yeah, I had to go and figure out something else. So in this habitat, I was just trying to go for a, like a nice nature scene, something that could like mimic a bit a natural habitat of the skunk somewhere in a temperate forest, like an edge of the forest. Uh, so there will be a lot of nature in here, a lot of uh, really co cool details. I must say that I am really happy with how it has turned out. As you guys can see right now we are doing sort of like a preparations. I am still finishing the building because this building is housing both the raccoons and the uh, striped skunks. So uh, we will also today focus a bit more on the interior. I will show you how I will do those little night quarters for the animals at the end of the video. I am sort of like sometimes skipping those areas but today I decided that because this video today will be sort of like a shorter one because I had so many things done in the last episode I decided that we I will show you guys how I do the interiors so if you like to learn something more about them definitely stay tuned till that part of the video and right now it is time to do my favorite part of the entire habitat. I mean those like landslides or cliffs. I never know how to call those things. I mean those like sher sharp edges of the terrain. I'm sure that there is some English word for that. So if you know how to call those things, let me know down in the comments because I am always looking for this word because I am using those things more and more often in my videos and I often call it cliffs, but, but this is probably not a cliff, maybe a landslide. I'm not sure. I was trying to find an, like a definition of something like that on the internet and it wasn't too clear to me. So if any of the English native speakers are watching this video, please help the foreign guy out. I have no idea how to call it and I would like to be professional so if any of you have an idea please just let me know I will be so so grateful for that and of course to do those things we are using the new stalagmites from the twilight pack and I think that this is really a highlight of today's episode of today's uh, habitat I just love how it looks especially when I will add all the foliage to this habitat those are just those details that make this habitat a bit more interesting and 
special so uh, yeah I am so glad that I was able to come up with this idea because uh, to be honest I was kind of having like a struggle with this habitat I mean I just finished the barriers and all the stuff and I just look at the like a finished parameter of the habitat there's nothing inside and I was like Okay, what now? <laughs> so yeah, I was able to come up with this idea and I am quite pr proud of myself because in the end I think it looks really, really good. I also added one borrow for the animals uh, inside of one of those landslides. I think it's like a perfect spot for it, like a realistic spot. I think animals would try to dig in those places. I always love to add the borrows whenever I can, wherever the animals is using the borrow. I just think it is such a fun addition. It's so nice nice that they added the boros and the fact that we can see the animals inside is even better so I was really happy when I learned that the skunk can actually use the boro. And when it comes to the skunk, uh, let me just tell you that for me it was a very like unexpected animal uh, when I just when I first learned that they were adding the skunk I was like wow I really didn't expect that but I also got really excited for that I like to be surprised so this was a really nice surprise I never thought that the skunk will be added to this game and I am very glad that it did because it looks just beautiful I mean this is probably one of the best models that we have in the game right now it's it's really well made. I mean, the details, the fur texture, the tail, the colors, the face. It is such a nice made animal and I am very happy whenever those smaller animals are added to our game uh, because, you know, the Zeus is a mixture of animals of different sizes. There's not only like elephants, giraffes and so on. There's tons and tons of those small, tiny animals that are often housed in houses so or any other like dedicated like areas they are maybe not the highlights of our zoos but it's still nice to have this variety of different animals in our zoos so I think that the striped skunk is a perfect addition and it's also a perfect addition to the Elm Hill City Zoo because we have this whole like temperate taiga section here in our zoo so whenever we'll get more of those animals I think that they will get the spot in here and this is growing this makes sense because we are building those uh, this zoo in the temperate biome in Europe uh, so uh, all of those animals will feel just at home in here so I would like to have as more of those as I will be able to and that's why we'll also be adding uh, the red fox uh, to this area in the next episode so yeah in the next episode you can expect the red foxes because I saw someone asking if I'm planning to add the foxes and of course I am they'll be here uh, I will try to find some really nice color variations because I would love to have some different colors of them uh, the pieable one for example but we will see because it is quite hard to get them in sandbox mode uh, just by buying tons of them out of the uh, trade center and hoping for the best uh, but we will see I'll have to find some really nice inspiration for the red fox habitat because uh, for me I think that this animal actually isn't too popular in European zoos the raccoons and the skunks are very popular but the red fox, for example, in my local zoo or in the Warsaw Zoo that I've been recently, I don't think that there were there are any uh, of the uh, red foxes. I haven't seen them in Barcelona when I was last time and also in Berlin. So yeah, I don't think that they are too popular. This is the animal that I tend to meet when I'm walking my dog all the time. So uh, I'll have to find something nice for them, something that will... Uh, just I think again mimic their natural habitat so uh, I will have to think about it but coming back to the skunk habitat you guys could see that I decided to use the huts the little like houses for the raccoons one more time in this habitat but but I also tried to make them a bit different this is what I saw in almost all of the skunk habitats that I looked for online uh, there always been some like like smaller huts or different you know small I don't know wooden houses for them to sleep with a tiny openings I mean this is probably the place where they spend their day they are active during the night uh, so I also wanted to add something like this I wanted to build like a small dog house so I've changed the design of the little like hut a bit I've changed the opening also the 
uh, the color and I added this metal roof to it and I added three of them inside of this habitat and I think it looks really really cool like something that you would see in the zoos this is not only like a nature but sometimes you have those like little shelters for the animals or different enrichment items and I think that it gives the anim animals more opportunities to hide it gets more in interesting for them they can go from one shelter to another uh, so yeah this is something that I am really happy that I added because I think it adds a lot to this habitat. As you guys can see, there are a lot of plants in this habitat. Again, I wanted to make it look a bit overgrown. I didn't show you all the planting. Uh, I skipped a bit because, again, I didn't want to make this video too long. And this is all the time using the same kind of plants. So I am sure that you'll be able to figure out how I did it. After adding the plants, I wanted to add some texture and detail to this habitat. So I added tons and tons of the decals. Uh, so I like to use this like moss deco uh, and change the color of it to the sand or like a dirt one so it just looks like the animals were digging the skunks are of course digging animals they dig those burrows and they just you know messed up the uh, ground the soil they moved the soil here in this habitat i like to you know accumulate or add a lot of uh, those uh, soil or those decals next for example to the burrow so it looks like the skunk just where it was digging out the burrow from the dirt from the burrow and this is of course a little touch of realism i saw so many of those skunk habitats on pinterest and there were always some burrows there are always a lot of you know soil and sand and they were quite messy so this is what i wanted to recreate in here and also i added some roots some like dry branches and stuff just to make this habitat look a bit more messy uh, and after after that I will move on to do our little water section for those guys to have a drink in. I'll just you know do the banks of this water section with some rocks to make it look a bit more finished and yeah that was basically all when it comes to the outside part of the habitat. It was quite fast like for me it was quite fast. <laughs> always I always take so much time building those habitats but this was quite fast. Uh, it was good that I already had like a barrier set so anything and I just had to fill in the middle of the habitat so uh, it was a really pleasant work I love how this habitat and I really enjoyed building it and when I see the skunk using it I am just in love with those guys and this habitat so I hope you guys will like it as well I always love to build for those smaller animals because we can focus more on the details of the entire habitat it's so different than building for animals just like for example giraffe where you know uh, from the very beginning that you won't be able to put so many details into that habitat because it will take just hours upon hours upon hours of work uh, so here we are building something small and we can focus on how the plants are positioned if everything looks good so I always like when those small animals are added to the game and I am still 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 wishing for my African credit porcupine I hope that it will be added soon it is not as tiny as a skunk but still a smaller animal and I love those guys so much I love I think that they are just beautiful and I would love to have it in a game I am sort of like sad that it wasn't added with the Twilight pack but maybe in some of the future uh, DLCs we'll get it as well Okay, so as you guys can see, we started to work on a shelter for our striped skunks. At first, we are doing the entrance to the shelter uh, with those guillotine doors. Those are the doors that are coming from up to down. <laughs> I don't know how to call it there, just like sliding down and this is called a guillotine door if I'm correct. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is how the skunks will just enter their habitats. And in the second we will focus on the interior. I will do just like a two separate night quarters or I don't know small cages uh, just for them to uh, be separated if there is a need for that for example if there are small ones or I don't know anything else uh, and we'll add some refund details to those night quarters so it will all be here in a second. 
Right now I am working on windows because I realized that there are no windows in this building so uh, we probably need some source of light in here. Uh, so we're adding three windows and in a second I will uh, work on the holding for the animals and then I will also add uh, some details for the keepers like some shovels, some brooms and uh, stuff like that. And while we are doing all that let me give you guys some fun facts about the striped skunk. So the striped skunk is of course native to United States and Canada. One of the most notable characteristics of this animal is its defense system. The striped skunk have an ability to spray a bad smelling fluid from uh, two glands located near the base of the tail. This oily mask can uh, cause temporary blindness and pain if sprayed in the eyes of the potential attacker. Juvenile skunks are capable of spraying at 8 days old, around 2 weeks before their eyes open, which is just crazy. This is probably why the skunk gets such a bad reputation, although they are just lovely animals. Also, there is this like bad saying, if someone just smells not good, we call him a skunk at least in my language, so it doesn't help for those animals that we associate skunk with being something bad. Uh, so yeah, that really is making me like sad for them because they are really lovely and really nice looking guys. And this is not their fault that they developed this like defense mechanism. And this is the defense mechanism. They don't do it to uh, like attack on purpose. They do it to defend themselves. So yeah, we should be a bit more like compassion net about our lovely striped skunk. The striped skunk is really intelligent animals and they are often kept at homes as pets or at barns to uh, mice and rats. If they are kept at home uh, their like spray glands are removed so they cannot do that anymore. And there are also a lot of different color variations which were developed through selective breeding and there are, for, for example, uh, white, grey ones, albino ones, uh, lavender ones, champagne, mahogany ones and chocolate brown. So there's a whole range of different skunks. Uh, in the game we just have the regular one, the black and white and also uh, an albino one as far as I am concerned. But there are definitely more, they were just developed through the captive breeding. The striped skunk is usually a solitary animal, they prefer to live on their own. However, during the winter months, many striped skunks get together in communal dens to survive the harsh winter together. Even though they don't strictly hibernate, the skunks share body heat and warmth. So this is so cute because they just hug themselves during the winter time to be warmer. Okay guys, so as you can see, I am doing those night quarters from the wooden pieces that we have in the game. Uh, also, I uh, used the fences, the mesh fences for the like a base or a frame uh, of those little wooden walls and I really like this detail uh, and I created my own custom like little gates for the keepers to go in there. Of course, they are not usable in the game, but they look so so good. Uh, later, I will add some details inside of those night quarters. I will again add those little like huts or houses for them to sleep in. I will also add uh, some enrichment items, although probably they don't use all of them uh, in the game. And also I will use just some like branches for something more to be in there. And of course a lot of decal pieces because those uh, like areas tend to get uh, very dirty very soon. So I always like to add them for a little bit of realism. After that, I will also add some tools for the keepers. As I told you guys, I will add the door inside of the habitat. Uh, I also got some questions about the habitat doors. You can cover them with whatever you want. The keepers are going through uh, everything and they are still able, able to reach uh, the habitat door. So uh, if you don't want to see those ugly doors, because sometimes they don't fit at all to the habitat, you can cover them with whatever you like. Okay guys, this is all that I have for you today in this episode. I hope you enjoyed our little uh, skunk habitat. I hope you like it. I must say that I most certainly do. I think it fits really well into our zoo and I am very very happy with it. If you enjoyed the episode, please consider to subscribe to my channel with the subscribe button down below. Uh, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time 
I upload a new video and of course like the video if you enjoyed it. And of course leave me a nice comment down below if you enjoyed the video. If you would like to support me a little bit extra and get access to really cool perks such as custom giraffe emojis, members only posts and members only discord chat, you can do it with the join button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!